The horn of Helm Hammer Hand shall sound in the deep one last time. Today we are playing a custom map in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22 to defend the Helm's Deep against the forces of Isengard. And guys, this is not the campaign. This is a custom map. And, uh, uh, you know, I failed one time. So you know what it means. It's very tough. It's very challenging. And I, I know what you are thinking. You are like, but James, you have 750 command points available. How can this be tough? How can this be challenging? Trust me. Trust me on that one, it's gonna be quite tough, it's gonna be quite challenging, and hopefully this time I will not fail, and hopefully you will also enjoy to watch this. I mean, Helm's Deep, you know, in the films, one of my most favorite uh, scenes in the Two Towers, you know, Lord of the Rings, and I was a big fan of this fight, and hopefully we can, you know, replay this in insane moment of the films, also in this beautiful video game from 2004. <laughs> Dude, I cannot believe it, guys, we will have a 20 years anniversary very soon, and for the 20 years anniversary, we're hopefully gonna be also able to pull off a special event to make it, you know, really enjoyable. So, uh, to, you know, back to this mission, we have no fire arrow upgraded units, so you cannot buy fire arrow, that's not possible. You have a lot of limitations, and also obviously, you know, we have power points now, we can collect them also later, but, you know, obviously you cannot summon EOD, you cannot summon ants, you cannot summon eagles, they are all disabled in this mission to make it, you know, just much more challenging and also much more fun. And by the way, <laughs> I was playing without the game sound all the time, so sorry for that one. Okay, so Isengard army arrives in 8 minutes and 18 seconds and we have 750 command points to fill with Yeoman archers. You can not recruit elven warriors in this mission, that's not possible. And obviously, you have the heroes from the films, you have Aragorn, Legoras, Gimli, Eowyn and also Theorin. For the defense, they are level 5, the 3 hunters, and the 2 Rohan heroes are only level 4. The second the banner upgrade is going to be purchased, we need to demolish the armory and replace it with another farm. I mean, also, you start with a lot of money at the beginning of the game, but you need the money. You need to fill your command points ASAP, you know, with all these Yomon archers to get the defense you need to withstand against the, you know, forces of Isengard. Okay. So split them up a little bit, make sure that we are covering the entire wall. And also, there is a good thing about this many command points. It just like feels like in the films, you have like a massive line of defense and the open end will outnumber you still and the plan is to get overwhelmed. That's the, you know, helm steep, I like it when it's tough. I like it when it's hard and don't get me wrong when I say I like it when it's hard. I'm talking about the mission, not about anything else. Okay, so need to be kind of fast, we need to build a defense, worthy of the Helm's Deep. We need more and more and more and more. Yeoman archers. Elves come, open the gates and send for the king. Oh yeah, I mean, remember I said we cannot recruit elves, that doesn't mean that we can't get reinforcements, but we still can't recruit additional elves, and these are gonna be the only elves we're gonna have to keep alive, or not keep alive, but we should be trying to keep them alive for the entire mission if we can, and for that reason we're gonna place them at the, at the roof, you know, in the in the last stage of the Helm's Deep, so they can be the backup plan, you know what I'm saying, just like when everything falls, when everything fails, when we lose the Deeping Wall, when we lose the main gate, then we should have like a plan B or plan C to, you know, withstand for the 25 minutes to be able to call on Eomar's army. And this is gonna be 25 minutes full of torture, full of suffering, but also full of epicness, you know? Okay, we can level them up every single time. We have no limitations in terms of leveling up. You can get all your units, if you manage to do that, to level 10. Refugees, okay. The Vork Riders are chasing them down, we need to protect them. And that's very important because they bring some treasure, they bring some chest, and we can also use that to, uh, you know, upgrade the units. We have a lot of money, but we didn't upgrade any of the units yet, you know. The second we get all the command points full, we will start giving them heavy armor and also banner carry upgrade, just to make them a bit more yeah, stronger. Protect the refugees. I fear neither death nor pain. We have the shields maiden of Rohan with, you know, her uncle, Thiorin, the king of Rohan. For Rohan, for our people. Take your 
Dude, it's always such a satisfying feeling when you play Helm's Deep, you know? Even after many, many years, I've been playing this mission many, many times in multiple different mods. In BFME 2, Rise of the Witch King, Rise of the Witch King mods, BFME 1, on different patches, you know? And uh, after this one, we're gonna also play it once again, once the patch 2.22 campaign is gonna be updated in the next version. We will also change the Helm's Deep quite a lot. And I'm also excited about this one, because the plan is to make it as challenging as possible and that also means it has to be as hard as possible and if, you know maybe not in the version 2.6 but in the version 2.7 also the ai the gondor rohan isengard mordor ai will get a rework so it's gonna be also much more challenging if you are looking for a challenge to beat one hard ai be you know stay tuned you're ready Okay, our money is not looking too bad, but again, we have still many, many units to be upgraded. We have only 2 minutes and 40 seconds time to fill up the command points for 750. And also give everybody some weapons, you know. We have also peasants, we're gonna combine them later on with the Yeoman Archers. The good thing about the combination is, not only you've like, you will have like a, like a strong front line, the peasants are gonna be the ones who are gonna tank the damage. But also, if you combine units, you need to only upgrade one of the units. And the second you combine them... Also, the second battalion, which is unupgraded, will receive the upgrade. So it's, you know, basically much more cost efficient. A reward for saving the refugees is at the front gate. Is at the front gate. Thank you very much, refugees. I needed that one. Look, our money, dude. We are getting poor now. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's grab the money. And let's retreat to the Helm's Deep. One minute and 40 seconds remaining for the epic battle. Look our second wall, dude. Do you see how many Alvin warriors we got there? Crazy. Okay, let's pick up the money. Give them draft. Without draft, the peasants are even weaker than orcs. So draft is a must-have when you play Rohan. In skirmish, campaign, but also multiplayer. Okay, so guys, the question is... Can we hold 20, 21 minutes in 4 seconds until Eoma finally arrives? That's gonna be the golden question. Let's level them up once again. Level 4, that's very good. We can also give them heavy armor, you know. Nice. Okay, boys. It's time. So it begins, as the audience would like to see. So it begins. We are a strong people. Stay together. We'll do everything we can. 30 seconds. We cannot get any stronger. I mean, we could upgrade every one of the remaining units. But again, I failed one time. So I need to be a bit more uh, careful about, you know, how to invest the money. I was like, at my first try, I was like, oh my goodness, I, this is going to be easy. This is going to be like a walk into park, you know. I have like so much money, what can happen? <laughs> but then I got overwhelmed. That's what happened. And I got crashed hardcore. And I don't want that to happen again. Okay, so it begins. Keep them at a distance. Keep them at a distance. Keep them at a distance. Be ready, Archer. Be ready, Archer. Be vigilant. Okay, we You'll need to be ready with here. every single unit. Skirmish formation for more DPS. Have an arrow ready. And, Keep guys, holy guacamole. This is gonna be tough. And this is gonna be fun. Because it's gonna be tough. We almost have a sword. Okay, with Theodian and Eowyn in a safe spot. And they, they, they tend to die very quickly, and that's going to be quite annoying. You can revive them, but again, look our money. You know, we are not very rich anymore. And unlike in the campaign, you have also no multiplier. So basically, you don't get money faster. In the campaign, in this mission, you have like 1.4, 1.5x multiplier. It means you get like 50% more money. Um, and we have not the same situation in this custom map. Okay, here they come. Here they come, and we are investing every single money, every single resource we're collecting into upgrading our units to make them a bit more... Look at this. I mean, that's only the first wave, remember? I mean, there are multiple, I mean, you will see, okay? Okay, you will see. I don't want to spoil too much. Okay. So, uh, the one thing about this mission is the ladders are very tanky and, you know, sniping them down, especially without fire arrows, is nearly impossible because they are very tough to be taken down. 
So with that being said, the enemy will indeed multiple times manage to get on top of the wall and we will be in constant fighting, you know? And I personally like that. And for that reason, also in our campaign, in our mission in the patch 2.22, we will make sure to nerf the damage from the archers against these ladders because the outnumbered advantage from the Isengard AI in this mission can only mean something if they ever manage to get into the melee range, if they ever manage to get on top of the wall, if they ever manage to fight against you. Oh my goodness. And what do you guys think about this green animation for the, for the Rohan faction? Once again, you now we are making sure that every faction has some unique stuff. And also I'm very happy because we have now a new modeler in our team. And hopefully in the near future, we should be able to, you know, improve the models of the game. Make them look better, brighter and more in HD textures to make the game a bit more visually more attractive. Elendi. Very funny interaction. <laughs> you saw what they have. You know, they were like, should we go up? Should we go down? I don't know. Okay, we have 16 minutes left until Eoma comes, and that's a long time. Like 16 minutes in an RTS game, especially in this mission, is gonna be a very long time. Let's snipe. If you don't know, the Spirit or Extra from Gimli deals bonus damage to the siege weapons, including the siege ladder. You can see, you can one shot that. And if you can kill the ladder while Uruks are trying to climb, then you can one shot the full battalion of Uruks too. Oh boy, you guys, we are losing the deeping wall. I have bad news, we are losing the deeping wall. Okay, we need to be prepared for the worst. Just too many ladders and we have not the DPS, we need to take them down in a second. We will eventually lose also the right side. <laughs> I don't think we can hold this any longer, boys. I mean, we have a very strong, uh, you know, the roof of Helm's Deep. But the keep is... The power points are rising, but you can see, like, these are the only power points we can ever use. We cannot pick up, you know, we can pick up, obviously, um, you know, Eagle Summon, and Summon, but it's not going to be usable in this mission. So it's not possible. Okay. If Pez I don't know, man. I don't know if peasants are going to be a good choice, to be honest, because they have too many crossbowmen. And... They have also heavy armor, they have levels on them, you know, they will be also very strong. They have also two camps captured under their, under their control, so... I wanna jump, but... Okay, we need to jump on this... Do it, Gimli, do it! Now, 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 Gimli, Gimli, would you please jump? Okay, Gimli, thank you very much, dude. It only took you 1,500 years, Gimli. EA Games almost released BFME 3 in the meantime, Kappa. <laughs> and guys, did you hear that EA Games is actually, you know, gonna gonna make a new Lord of the Rings game for the mobile? And, uh, dude, I don't know what to say, you know, that's kind of triggering me. Why mobile? They already made like a new mobile game, Rise to War, a few months ago. And, you know, I know why mobile, <laughs> you know, I know why mobile, because it's the easiest way to make the game and also the fastest way to make money. But I just, I, like, I don't know. I just feel like, or I just want that the RTS games get a bit more love than they, and more attention than they do right now, because they deserve it. Oh boy, in the meantime, we will eventually lose the Git Boys. Our heroes are very strong, that's very good. Very, very strong Aragorn especially. Dude, Aragorn is sitting like a truck. But you see, we are getting overwhelmed. Big time, and even, Without the mines ever making it to our wall, that's very, really, very unfortunate. Peasants can be used to repair the gate. <laughs> let's go back, you know, let's go up, we cannot do this. We cannot hold the gate, that's not possible. And I have bad news for you because we have still 14 minutes. 14 minutes until we can call Elma's army, that's a long time. And we have just lost the deeping wall and we have just lost the main gate. Like, we are now in a prison situation, we will have zero money, because we have, we have lost literally every single building. The main gate is breached, yeah? We have lost everything that we got. And we hope, we will hope, we will have to hope that the Elven army with the heroes are gonna be enough to hold the line. I mean, the good thing is we have still a bunch of elves, right? Look our Elven army, like, it's crazy how many Elven warriors we got on the field. Let's move on. 
But trust me, I think they're gonna spawn even more units very soon. And also, let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about this mission, what do you guys, what do you guys think about Helm's Deep generally. Is this also your favorite mission? Or would you say, nah, Minas Tirith is better? And for me, it's hard to decide between Minas Tirith and Helm's Deep, but these two are definitely my most favorite, and I like them much more than Black Gate. I don't, I dis, I don't dislike Black Gate, but I think Helm's Deep and Minas Tirith are just, you know, miles ahead in terms of the organization, the the graphical investment of design to just make it like in the films, because Black Gate is like a flat area with like two <laughs> black doors. You know, but here, you know, you have like different stages, you need to keep protected, you need to hold and stuff. I, I, I like, I don't, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry for such ring. I like Black Gate, but I just like Helm's Deep and Minas Tirith a bit more, you know. Look, our power points, there'll be 44 power, 44 power points in the bank, but we cannot use them. What's the matter? Doesn't matter anything. Okay, we have, I mean, the good thing is our heroes are able to level up all the way to level 10. However, the bad news is that Aragorn has no chance to summon Offbreakers. I mean, it's not a bad thing because I believe if you could summon Offbreakers, it would just make it every everything a bit too easy. I want to just pick up everything here, just why not? I can't even. Look, everything is disabled, you see? Elven allies, Cloudbreak, Eagle allies, Bohan allies, everything is disabled, so you cannot use any of them. Of evil must end here. Okay, 11 minutes. Dude, it feels like the timer doesn't want to go down, guys. It feels like the timer doesn't want to go down. The good thing is we have leadership now. And you see the green animation when they when they level up? That's, I like that. I mean, Gondor will you know, glow blue. Rohan, as you can see, green. Isengard will glow white. For the units, red for the heroes, and Mordor is gonna glow red for the units. And Mordor has no glow for the heroes because they are their heroes can't level up. So basically, Mordor heroes, Nazgûl and Witch King coming out of level 10, and Gollum cannot level up either. So if only unit level up animation, it's gonna be red. Obviously, you know the red color belongs kinda to Mordor, while the white color belongs to Isengard because it's the white hand. Okay, 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. I think we can do it. I hope we can do it. Because it would be a shame to not see the final you of the battle if we made it this far, you know? Okay, I see a huge wave. And you see, every single one of them, almost every single one of them have, has upgrades. Forge plates, heavy armor. They also level up faster. Oof. <laughs> okay, so... I'm gonna make a peasant army just in case they might get inside the jeans and peasants are a bit more tanky especially with Theodin and also Aragorn being nearby they can actually fight a bit longer the elven warriors they are better obviously in terms of damage output but peasants with heavy armor and also draft they can become a bit more tanky in compared to the elven warriors and they also cost less command points and obviously they have also no more archery range up on the field and for that reason we have also no money to recruit. We cannot recruit elves in the first place, you know? But even if we could, we have no money anymore. That's what I was trying to say at the beginning. It seems like you have a lot of money, but you have to fill up a lot of units. You need to get 750 command points of units. You need to upgrade them all, you know? And then you all of a sudden are not that rich anymore. You will lose everything around the bottom side. There is nothing I can do about the situation. And now we also see Ballista coming. Okay, I mean, hmm, 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 <laughs> I'm pretty tempted to actually go ham with, with, you know, Gimli and do some shenanigans. Let's go, Slayer, haha, <laughs> Gimli is going ham. Jump. This guy's annoying me. Like, Gimli, are you waiting to be, to be thrown, like, by, 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 by Aragorn, you know? You wanna, you wanna get tossed or something? I thought nobody tossing a dwarf. Are you just like bluffing or what? Like, he has like his own will, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't want to listen to me. Because I'm a human and I'm not a dwarf, you know? To be honest, the relationship between Aragorn and Gimli was much more respectful. I think Gimli had no problems with the humans, but I think, or with men, but I think he just genuinely didn't like elves because of the love and hate relationship between elves and dwarves, also seen in the Hobbit films. 
uh, you have seen the first, you know, time when they actually got to know each other. But then, you know, Tauriel fell in love with Killy. So it's definitely a possible. Same situation also happened to Gimli and Legoras. At the end of the day, they became the best friends. And that's also like a great message to the humanity, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, be open to everyone, you know? You can love everyone. Doesn't matter where he's coming from, what, what language he's speaking, doesn't matter. Okay, seven more minutes. <laughs> By the way, as we are playing Helm Sleep, I'm giving like live advices, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and guys, please, if you enjoy this kind of videos, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's for free. And if you are down there, please also make sure to leave a like. Again, it's for free, but it helps us all the time. So, you know, takes two seconds of your time. Would really appreciate it. Especially this Helm's Deep video, I believe, deserves lots of likes. Let's see how many likes we can get on this video. Okay. Six minutes and 30 seconds left. Hold the line. Hold the line. Destroy all Isengard camps. I mean, really? Really? You want me to do this right now? Are you out of your mind? You see what's coming at the bottom side of your screen? You see in the minimap what is coming? But, dude, this reminds me to the film 300, you know what I'm saying? The outnumber advantage doesn't matter, because in the Helm's Deep, the, the, the pathways, so the, the chance for the opening units to reach to our units is very tiny. So they need to be kind of clumped and then they need to be they can only reach us slowly right because of the design of this of this uh you know fortress that's why we are able to hold that so long dude the green level of animation i fall in love every time i see it hold on a second okay so you gotta destroy this please can you take down the i don't want to be attacked from this location they have still the chance to come from the other side but i don't want to lose the gate for no reason they don't want to attack him for whatever reason oh yeah i mean my units they don't deal damage so we need to uh open the gate let's open the gate and bring a peasant and then with the peasant we can hopefully you know deal with this ram and the good thing about this situation is you can use your peasants to repair the gates too i will show you guys once we are hopefully able to save it uh, Oh my goodness, was, I mean, he needed only one more hit. I mean, calculated, not even close, baby. I want to repair it, can you please? Okay. One more peasant, maybe, to repair it. Please? Okay. Should be just fine, hopefully. Okay, four more minutes, boys, until the glorious moment is going to happen, and we are able to call on the Eomar's army, the Lord of Exile, you know? Okay, but you see at the bottom side of your screen what is coming up to us as we are talking. Oh, okay, I mean, oof, this is gonna be tough, I guess. The good thing is we have leadership, we have lots of leadership, you know, we have, you know, Legoras leadership for the Alvin warriors, we have Theodin leadership, we have Aragorn leadership and all of that stacked together. And I think the AI doesn't doesn't use freezing rain anymore. At the beginning of the game, he was using freezing rain multiple times, and we couldn't get any leadership bonuses available. But now we do have leadership bonuses, which is pretty good. I mean, they don't want to repair it, boys. Do you see this? They don't want to do it. They are What are you celebrating, brother? There is like a huge uh, evil army in your castle. What are you celebrating for? Destroy all Isengard camps. Dude, stop it. You know, don't tempt me, dude. I mean, I can't. Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm, should, I, should I just leave my castle unprotected? Because look what's coming. Let's use the Alvin Wood once again. We can make like a line. Remember the Alvin Wood and T the land, they last forever in this game. Until somebody else covers your land, or it's like a terrain in which you can build a fortress or outpost on, then it's gonna disappear. But without that, it's gonna last permanently. So, the longer the game goes on, the more lands you can place, and the more lands you can place, the more spots you will have, in which you will have additional armor leadership, and the, uh, the open end will have zero leadership bonuses in this area. Okay. Two minutes and 40 seconds. 
But you see it's becoming harder and harder and harder and we are getting more and more units to fight against. I see also Ballista coming. I mean the good thing, I mean in the worst case scenario we can use the hob you know the heroes Gimli and Aragorn, they are actually quite busted in this mission. They can fight against the Uruks all day long. And that's what we can do in the worst case. We can also try maybe with Gimli to jump from the top to the bottom, you know? Can we do this? Can we jump from this location to the bottom? I wanna do this actually. Come on, Gimli. Oh. What, what is he doing? Uh, okay, I give up on Gimli, guys. This guy doesn't wanna listen to me. Like dwarf. The stubbornness of a of a dwarf. Oh, but you see, all of a sudden we lose a lot. Dude, we are just at over 400 command points and we are dropping down now below 300. Okay. Oof. Too many crossbowmen now. Ballista. Uh, upgrade Uruks. And remember, <laughs> I need to do it. I need to bring in this speech once again. This is no rabble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. They are strong. I mean, their armor is long. <laughs> and their shields broad. Can you jump, please, Gimli? This Gimli, this Gimli is driving me literally. I mean, he's driving me crazy. He, okay, thank you, Gimli. Thank you. Was it that hard, Gimli? Thank you. Okay, disengage, please, if you can. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Legolas is also. What is Legolas doing? He's like trying to shoot. I think it's like a miscalculation in which he wanted to kill something, but the thing he wanted to kill dies before he can shoot, then he cancels the auto attack animation all the time. Oh, watch this. Watch the extra, guys. Watch this, watch this. Boom! You don't want to be clapped like this against Gimli's extra. Gimli's extra is able to deal. Holy guacamole! They are coming. Let them come. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. We have only one minute left, boys, and then it's gonna be the death and glory moment. Ooh, that's also cool, dude! Nice! Now for Wrath, now for Ruin, and the Red Dawn, Fourth Eolingas, Horn of Helm. Okay, the Horn of Helm in my hand shall sound in the deep one last time! Let's go! For Ruhan, for our people! This is juicy, this is satisfying, this is beautiful, guys. Holy moly, that's what I like to see. But, even if, what? Even if the glory is charged, our units are slowing down, because there are just too many units. That's the problem, there are just too many of them. Okay, the good thing is we have only 13 seconds left. 13 seconds until we can finally call on the Elmas army. And that's very much needed because look there is still like a chunky army of isengard waiting for us to be destroyed okay we need to reposition the army a little bit I mean, we have no money anyway so let's call oh you see you see he's spawning pikemen just like in the films dude that's crazy my man hey hold on a second is my gun invisible He's like a ghost now. What? <laughs> What's the Ghostbusters? My, I don't see my. Look, my Gandalf, guys. You see my Gandalf? He's like. Uh, he's, what? Okay. Interesting. That's. That's. Invisible Wizard. Look, look, look. That's gonna be first invisible war of power you will ever see in your life. Is he doing it? <laughs> first invisible. War of Power we have ever seen. To be honest, this channel, guys, you gotta be admitting this. This channel brought you many, many stuff you have not seen anywhere else before. And for that reason, again, please, please, guys, take two seconds of your time and subscribe to the channel. We are very close to 20,000 subscribers. It would be amazing if we can reach it with your help. It would be amazing. I mean, to be honest, first of all, I wouldn't, I never expected something like this in my life. When I first started the channel for the BFME content, I was like, okay. Maybe we're gonna have some couple of hundred people from all around the world, and you guys are nuts. We have like what almost 20k subscribers with BFME content exclusively on the YouTube channel in 2022 from a game that is made in 2004. Thank you guys so much, dude. 
<laughs> this is unbelievable. I'm so grateful, guys, for every single one of you, and especially for these guys who are putting in the effort, following me on my Twitch channel, and also tuning in to say, hey, I'm coming from YouTube, really means the world for me. You know, internet is the best place to find strangers and turn them into your friends, and also to find people with the same interests like you have. And I'm still speechless, and it's unbelievable for me that there are still so many fans of this old but beautiful gold game from 2004 around the world. Thank you, guys. You are the best. Okay, I mean, Gandalf the Invisible. We can maybe stun them once again with the ability from this thing. Now, now for Wrath, now for Ruin. The Horn of Helm. I can't even talk. The Horn of Helm Helm Head. Stuns them, it's like a cloud break effect, I believe. And what I want to do is I want to actually bring uh, my Theodine and my other units together. So the next Glorious Charge will have like a massive effect, you know. Then we can go for a, like, a, like a really big Glorious Charge moment. Because we need that, because there is still so much stuff we need to kill. So I know the game decides to tell me all the time, destroy all Isengard camps. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do, but... For that reason, we need to be grouped with Theorin and all the other Rohirrim with Irma and Ganov. And now, you see, now the additional buildings are unlocked. The second you can call the Rohirrim army, you can also unlock more uh, buildings. But again, <laughs> what's the matter if you have no more money? That's the problem, you know? You have 2,000, that's not gonna be enough. That's gonna be eventually enough for a, for a stable to Rohirrim and then upgrade them and that's it, you know? I mean, I believe we have lost so many so many units in this game, that's kinda, that's kinda nuts. Okay, we need to heal up around the well. Money is not a problem, we need to try our best to win with the army we just got. But I see multiple pikemen, I don't wanna ride into them. But our invisible Gandalf can maybe... <laughs> invisible without plus. I don't know what's going on. I have no clue why, the, why he's invisible. I have no clue at all, I can't tell you. Okay. And look, Aragorn is leading the peasant army, you know, with Gimli and Legolas. And Aragorn and Gimli, they were the MVPs of this mission for sure. They are just the front line, you know, absorbing lots of damage, throwing lots of attention, and also at the same time hitting like a truck. That's like the combo combo you will need. And if you don't know, you can, you know, empower your leap attack with the Slayer. So if you don't know, Slayer gives you additional damage. And the damage applies on everything you do with Gimli during the time, during the duration of the Slayer. So, that's why the extra is disabled, because if you could use extra when, you know, Gimli is using Slayer, it would deal 100% damage, more damage, and you would nearly be able to one-shot heroes. That would make Gimli to a very super OP, you know, character. That's why you cannot throw a Rex, uh, throw a axe, you know, when you are using the Slayer, but you can use Leap Attack, which again means 100% more damage when you are using it when Slayer is active. So basically, it's like a Visa Plus, but a, but a stronger version of that. You can one-shot almost everything with that, unit-wise. Okay, so now it's the time for us to clean stuff. I think we have almost the um, EOD available too. We have a power again from the Invisible Ganda for the second time. That's dope. <laughs> okay. Oh, dude, what? I can't even trample down the pikemen like this? I think the map is kind of modified. That you don't even need to be scared of pikemen. You can just trample them down. I was always trying to avoid them, but I just saw that you can literally one-shot them when you trample. I mean, with the time we learn... Oh, but you know what time it is, boys, guys? I think it's time for an invisible War of Power moment. It's so unfortunate if... I mean, it's so unfortunate that Gandalf is invisible and that we can't hear the sound effects and... His beautiful shadow facts. But it is so it is. Okay, the first castle is the first camp is gonna be destroyed very soon. And then we are gonna work our way up to the second. And the last castle or camp rather of the Isengard. And just like in the films, the good will overcome the evil and we shall be victorious. Victory, we have victory, as Theorin would like to say. But it was, dude, it was in, in intense, you know. I think when you play it for the first time, you might be surprised a lot by the by the amount of units you can recruit, and then you can kind of underestimate the mission, underestimate the map, and you can, you know, that's what happened to me, right? When I was first, last time, today, 
when I tried it for the first time, I was like, hey, this is gonna be quite easy. I have 750 command points, you know? What can happen to me? And then, with this mindset, I lost it. <laughs> and that's why I was playing a bit more careful. And when you play it careful, of course, it's winnable. But it's definitely challenging. It's very, very fun. And if you want to give it a shot, I will also leave a link in the description down below. If you want to download it for yourself, you can do this and play it for yourself. Okay. When you, you know, when you play this mission, when you play this campaign or whatever, then you need to make sure to destroy every single unit from the AI. Like, you have to destroy every single ladder. And that's why we need to split the army now to not lose time. And I think we can go for one more juicy and last glorious charge in this mission. I'm gonna use to cover this tainted land. It doesn't look good. The green land is looking much, much better. And GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, you know, stay beyond standards. Peace out. The enemies have fallen.